Thinking about the greatness of Blind Break, Joseph Spence, George Simonet. How about Freddie Manning Sr., Peanuts Taylor, Count Bernardino? You mustn't remember Ronnie Butler, Eddie Menace, and the Tea Connection. Wondering where all that talent has faded to? Or how good it would be to have those times all over again? <clears throat> Excuse me. Pause, think about it with intentional thought, and consider where we go from here. Stay tuned and hear what jazz philanthropist and musical savant J. Adrian D. Aguilar got to say about where the seeds are planted, which are taking root, and what we need to do for Bahamian talent to blossom once again. Something to think about with Dale Happy Knowles. What we think, we become. What we radiate, we attract. What we imagine, we surely can achieve. Let's change the narrative, 242. Welcome to Something to Think About with Dale Happy Knowles. And we're here this evening with some special, special, special people in my life. You know, we go way, 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 way back when I was trying to play the drums and all those kind of things, trying to follow, um, <laughs> you know, the maestro himself, Mr. Neil Simonet. You know, that dude, he makes the drums talk, you know, and he, <laughs> he made it seem like it, the drums was easy. You could just, just do this and do that and, you know, and everything and fall and play. And I'm like, I focus on baseball. You're talking about drums. <laughs> but, you know, when you get around the crew, you had to follow with what they was doing. So, you know, I try to pick up the drums and probably bass his drum once and that was the end of that. I mean, no fool with that, no, no. You ain't playing with this. <laughs> Welcome, brother Diagula. How are you? Hey, my brother. Thank you, man. Good, Thank good, you. Good. I'm great. How are you doing? I'm awesome, man. I'm awesome. Little challenge here. We had to relocate uh, my my usual location um, and what have you and some of the things. You know, my few always try getting away, but we we are online. We live and live in color, and so you know, it's right. what we what we get out there. What counts more? My voice might crackle a little bit. I took a little break. I had to take care of my body a little bit. And now you get that moving and flowing in the right direction. And so, you know, you're back in the seat. And people have been texting me and what's up me. Hey, what's happening? All these repeats. Bah, bah, bah. But they were good repeats. You know? Amen. That's that right. Cool, 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 cool. Now, I say you're a film and philanthropist. I can't even say the word right now. My brain's spinning too much. Uh, jazz, that is. And then you also, this is musical support. You, these names I call, the likes of the George Simonets and the Penis Taylor, and we know how great they was, and the Ronnie Butlers, and we also know the Tea Connection. You sit right with them. I don't care what people say, or you might even sit higher than them. But, you know, we in the Bahamas, we ain't believe in telling people they're better than somebody else. But, so, but you sit in that elk. And you might not say so, or people might not say that to you, but I say it to you. Because I know where you sit, and I know where my uh, our brother Neil Simonet sits. You know, you all are cream of the crop, excellence, par excellence, academically and practically in music. And what is greater is where your heart is. That's what really drives me. You know, my heart was in baseball. Your own was in music, which is great. So let's start off by um, telling us a little bit now. Um, because I know you could talk till tomorrow about yourself. <laughs> but uh, just a little bit about your background, because um, we know you went off to them highfalutin school, and then you decided to do some, some shifting around and stuff like that. Give, us, give, the, give our audience a little background as to who is Adrian Diagula, the maestro himself. Well, thank you, man. Thank you for that great introduction. I don't know about musical savant and maestro, but I'll, I'll accept it. Uh, mm -hmm. When you mention when when you mention a name like Neil Simonet, that's a good place to start because Neil was <clears> in <throat> my life from the beginning, uh, just about the beginning of my musical start. Mm -hmm. and, you know what came easy for him didn't necessarily come easy for me. Neil, like I mean, you said it well. Neil could really it, it's it's almost like there's nothing he can't do on the the drums, but his musical ability stretched far beyond just playing playing the drums. He's a great right. producer. 
He's just got a, he's just, <laughs> it's like, like he was created for music. Um, but my brother Barry um, mm -hmm. was, I guess, the first influence in my life musically. And then I have a cousin who I grew up with, Ciron Adams. Mm -hmm. They were older than me and all the girls used to go all out for them. And not for me. So, like, I wanted, like, you know, like, <laughs> you know, I had to learn something, right? Yeah. So my my initial, um, you know, motives were all construed. But um, I got serious with my music after I went uh, to Boston. I would say in 1980, mm -hmm. I went to Berkeley for a short while, and I Berkeley? saw, mm -hmm. yeah, I Berkeley College of Music, and I saw some talent there that we didn't have here, and that just really exposed me to a whole new different way of thinking about music the, the genres of music and mm -hmm. you know um and it that's how it all got rolling cool so now berkeley now i mean you you want brush that off but that ain't no little play play school to be going to so tell me it's a little bit about that experience right? it's a great college i mean you know yeah. i wish i had stayed and finished i didn't i transferred to musicians institute in la so i just did a year at berkeley but um, it's a great experience. And I went to Musicians Institute, which was also a, a great school in Los Angeles. Mm -hmm. I graduated there um, in 82, 82? Yeah, 82. And um, um, then I started working. I, I picked up gigs on the road with different bands in, in, in America. Mm -hmm. I spent about 24 years in the United States, traveling around, excuse me, playing with different groups um, from mm -hmm. city to city and just getting my butt whooped, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. in different genres of music. Um, but Berkeley, yeah, um, Berkeley was just, at the time I went to Berkeley, I was 19 years old. They crammed mm -hmm. you with, with work um, and it, it was great. I mean, I just, uh, you know, it, it was just crazy. It was crazy. It was, uh, I wanted to stay, but um, Neil and I went to Berkeley together. We were actually roommates, and then oh boy, that's you know, what there. Yeah. See, that's what happened. It wasn't the school. It was yeah, yeah. <laughs> and we actually moved to LA together too. Oh, gee. So, so we were like, like you know, Samuel's twins. You know, right? you mm. know, that's my boy. Yeah. yeah. So when was you in studying in school though? What 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 type of um academics or well, oh, what type of discipline or stream what was your focus let's put it that way mm -hmm. well my focus was music performance, performance so okay. yeah so i so you know we had to do air training we had to do a course on in piano uh, basic uh, fundamentals and the piano um harmony theory orchestration um listening analysis so you have to be able to listen to records and be able to understand what's happening in the song uh, recognize, um, you know, different movements and stuff, uh, um, and 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 then transcribe. Um, and then my one-on-one -on -one lessons dealt with actually um, learning the instrument. So I had one-on-one -on -one lessons with bass instructors, as you know. Mm -hmm. My principal instrument is the bass, and I and I started studying the double bass when I was at Berkeley um, with a great bassist by the name of John Nebs, who's now deceased. Mm -hmm. um and he, he was just he was he was a great teacher um and um i've had like a hundred different bass teachers since then um but um it, it, you know it, it it's funny because i'm sitting there thinking about it now and i'm thinking it's a perpetual climb because there's mm -hmm. no like there's no destination there's no finish point to say that's it i've, I've arrived you know there's no higher that i can go the guys that I was studying with at the time, they found people to study with. Right. And these were like top notch. I mean, I studied with like Rufus Reed, who's, you know, a legend. Mm -hmm. And he's, whenever he goes to Europe, he finds someone to study with, you know, because mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, there's always something that you can improve on, you know, and yeah. that, that environment is just such a great thing to be a part of. And, and then jazz is such a creative uh, genre of music that, you could just keep exploring. I mean, even exactly. know that, right? Exactly. Mm -hmm. it, it, it's it's all about jazz. I I like to um, say that jazz is predicated on the art of improvisation, of improvising. Mm -hmm. right. So you know, you know, um, so that in and of itself sets it apart from other genres. You know, because it's not like a like a pre pre constructed pre thought of 
um, puzzle, so to speak, where, mm -hmm. you know, other genres may be that. Um, it's, it's, it's not that. Yeah. But Madam Producer, if you could find the, the quote um, somewhere in our archives still, on, but um, Jackson Burnside talked about um, where the Bahamas should be. If you could put that up for a second, that'd be good. But um, so when we look at all of this now, um, you ended up having an affinity for jazz itself. But like you say, you, you all had to learn all these different things first and foremost. But um, what would have inspired you to get into jazz itself? Um, when I went to Berkeley and I saw these young kids with, you know, young teenage faces like what I had at the time, mm -hmm. playing playing this music that, you know, I could only hear on the radio on occasion or on television on occasion. Um, it wasn't like I wasn't surrounded by it. I mean, I grew up in the 60s like you did. Um, mm -hmm. So we, we had a better scene then. But I think a little bit before our time, like with the Cat and Fiddle and the Zanzibar and the Banana Boat and that, I think it was more of a jazz scene then um, or closer to um, right. what, what I was experiencing in Boston. Um, but when I went to Berkeley and I saw I saw and heard these bands play, the big bands and small combos, small jazz combos, mm -hmm. it, it 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 drew me in, you know. And I, I as I started to listen to it more and study it myself, I, I realized that man, this is fun, mm -hmm. you know. I mean, I'll be getting rich doing this, but boy, <laughs> having some fun, you know. Yeah, the, some the, people it, do. <laughs> some people do. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. So, um, um, yeah, I just was drawn in by the music and, and seeing it too was a big part of the pulling in. Yeah. So Madam Producer, you can put that up one more time for me. So Jackson Burnside had made some statements uh, actually he's having a talk and and he talked about he said by the year twenty twenty more persons would travel to the Bahamas for its art, culture and heritage rather than sun, sand and sea. That's Jackson Burnside the third, you know, the most great um architect engineer person we have around in many people's eyes, you know, expanded uh, thought, just yeah, yeah. like how you would have traveled a lot, he would have traveled a lot, and then came back home to make his mark. Wow. Thank, thank you, Madam Producer. So when we look at this statement, and we look at the times of the Blind Blakes and, and the Freddie Munnings, and then into the Eddie Ministers and stuff, those times, those 40 years or thereabouts, um, music in the Bahamas flourished. Um, and the, the environment, you talk about the cat and filler and, and all these other places. But we seem to have faded away from that. What, what from that perspective, um, would you say to, to tell us that, not necessarily why it went from one to the other, but what was the cause of it being able to flourish at the time? Well, um, my, my, my kind of, my start in the music industry in this country mm -hmm. would have been late seventies throughout the eighties. Right. Mm -hmm. And then I moved away. But, um, when I was coming up, like when we were kids, there were all kinds of live bands, Sweet Exorcist, T-Connection, Soul right. Make, Go For Groovers. Yeah, I mean, you know, the list went on. I mean, like the hot stuff, the Mighty Makers, the Music Makers, the Holiday mm -hmm. Express. You had bands on almost every corner, you, it, it seemed. Then we, they started replacing us with disc jockeys. Oh, disc jockeys, okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I guess it, it saved um, the hey. businesses some money, mm -hmm. but it ousted the musicians. Right, right. And, um, you know, they were still getting, you know, the, 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 the dance floor packed and stuff, but um, we suffered as a result. Mm -hmm. So I think um, that had a lot to do with it, bringing in, replacing us with, with DJs right. in the early 80s, especially. Cool. But now you, you, you survive that type of, of I, call it, um, I call it fading, but... Um, transformation or migration from one type to the next. And you stuck with this when a lot of people would have, you know, tried to find a new source of income and what have you. To me, you've always had this passion. You, you and um, 
and um, for the seminar. And that's why I said, you know, I call his name earlier because it actually it's three of y'all. And it's my cousin Peppy. But I don't know if Peppy could really play anything, but, you know. Peppy it, can play, yeah. Peppy. Huh? No, Peppy, I know he, I mean, yeah. at y'all level, right? But Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But um, so when we look at the three of y'all, besides y'all being peas and board and, and peas and rice together and all that kind of stuff, y'all stuck one, one thing with each other and then the other thing to this system of, of music, right? Yeah. And, and so forth. And so what drove that passion to continue to do that? Versus following everybody else and saying, I got in a hotel or this or that, what have you. Exposure. Okay. Um, one of the biggest words in music is inspiration. Mm. If I'm inspired, mm -hmm. I come home and I play my bass. I sit to the piano. I do things that that help to drive me further, that help to better my talents. Mm -hmm. If I'm not inspired, <laughs> I turn it on the TV and I chill in, right? <laughs> And that's common over here when you don't have an environment that inspires you. Mm. America inspires you because America is truly great with, with, with talent, with places to go mm -hmm. to find crazy people like yourself who will inspire you, mm -hmm. who will put you. You could learn something from you. You could study with this person. You can go to a, a, a bar, a, a pizza parlor, a coffee shop, and hear the most unbelievable musicians play in New York City or right. Los Angeles. And mm -hmm. come back thinking, well, my Lord, I spent $10 tonight and I had a, a, an amazing concert, you know. Um, so when you don't have that here, you, you suffer. Right. You know, it, it, it's, 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 like a, it's like a frog in a, in a pot of water under a Bunsen. Mm -hmm. you know, and the Bunsen's turned down low, but the frog is dying. Just don't right. know it's dying. You know, so that's what a, 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 a environment that's deprived of inspiration does to you. Mm -hmm. I was fortunate because I got out and I mm -hmm. stayed out for a very long time. So I've seen some stuff <laughs> that right. still got me on 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 edge mm -hmm. to this day on, in a beautiful way. Right, right. So you know, and it's different than YouTube. Right, it's right. different. It's different than when you can go and you know, I'm six feet from this brother. Right. And they, they are just, I'm so inspired. It's just right. a beautiful thing. Yeah. But you know, Mr. Cuban, I call him Mr. Cuban. I, I can't remember his, his real name. The, the Dallas Mavericks um, owner. He was on... on Mark on, Cuban. Um, Mark, yeah, he was on um, Gilbert Arena's uh, show the other day, the podcast, and they were talking. And he said, the difference, and I know this from baseball, the difference from watching baseball or, or music or whatever on TV compared to walking in that stadium and when the crowd electrify the stadium and you feel that and, and how it inspires you to play, at, I guess, in a different space. Exactly. Then, I mean, you ain't even smoking or nothing like that, but it just raises you to another level. It's like, um, watching, it's like watching Junkin' on television as opposed to going there. Right, yeah. And being yeah. in the middle of that crowd and feeling that electricity. Yeah, yeah. Right, nothing, right. Nothing replaces that. So it's important for us to get these facilities back in place so that we could have those in inspiration. Because I remember writing to the government and saying, whatever you do, finish the National Baseball Stadium because of that same effect we just talked about, right? Mm -hmm. if, the, if our uh, baseball players, youth baseball players could go play in the stadium with a crowd and feel what that is versus not having it, then it will inspire them to be even greater than what, Greatness is coming out of baseball these days, which is a lot. Exactly. Right? So the same thing should happen with music. Now you, on that that note, you really and truly are doing wonders uh, with the youth. You know, um, I take my hat off to you because first of all, I don't know if I have patience like that, but you do. Um, <laughs> Well, that's why I'm all gray and you're not, you know. <laughs> no, I, I, I follow Dan old school of, of, of haircuts. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Take it all off. Not that I have gray like that, but, you know, the hair just ain't growing all in the same spot. So better have it off than shabby. Right. Know, <laughs> yeah. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Yeah, no problem. So... Uh, 
when when no. we when we look at these things now then so um the youth when they come to you what is drawing them to you um because i mean i know they see you and you have a presence and all that kind of stuff but you know as a youth if i didn't want to do i only want to do baseball so everything else i didn't want to do and so i didn't really show the interest but they draw to you when i see you in the same space as them they be like they 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 can't finish lapping up your words whatever you're saying they listening they're falling off the chair and people keep saying these people is the average and whatever so i don't know any the average people could play music but um, <laughs> so i don't i wish the government and everybody else would just kill this the average foolishness talk they have but anyhow that's another story <laughs> but how, well, what's your experience with that in terms of i'm crazy mm-hmm. you know <laughs> straight up i'm crazy i mean i really you know there, there are people who really like music and then there are people who love music like 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 i love music i've 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 given my life to to learning music I, i'm up like i have a very unconventional lifestyle so my house is called perpetual paradise because mm-hmm. you can come in and you can come in at any kind of hour and i have all kinds of equipment i got several drum kits and pianos and amplifiers and i'm always up for playing mm-hmm. so you know so you don't find a lot of that here especially among the old people. Right. So so kids know that about me. And I have um, guys here all the time who are just looking for a place to come and play. Mm-hmm. And I, I love teaching. And, and and it's a two-way street. I need them like they need me. Okay. I wish you were. I, I mean, we, you know, I, I lived in America for 24 years, 17 years in Los Angeles, mm-hmm. um, five years in, in New York, and one year in Maryland. And in that time, I took advantage of wherever I lived. I went out to jam sessions. I had tons of friends. I did lots of gigs. And I learned. And I learned. I learned. That was my university. That was my college. Mm-hmm. Just going out and getting my butt whooped and coming home with my shirt stuck to my chest. Whether it was $50 or $500, it didn't matter. The money was insignificant. Right. Mm-hmm. It was all about the music. And um, we don't really have that here. We don't have musicians here that are committed to the music on that level. That 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 culture comes from jazz, really, okay. more than more than other genres of music. Jazz musicians, it's not about the, you know, the the, the fine, sexy, half naked girls dancing in the background with mm, the, mm. with the with the pyrotechnics and all the lights and all that. It ain't really about that. It's, it's really band. organically mm-hmm. about the music. Mm-hmm. You don't need no tattoos. You don't have to have, you just 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 play the music and be honest about what you what you're expressing right. in the moment, and it's in the moment. So, I think that in and of itself attracts people who want to learn this beautiful art form because it truly is a beautiful art form. Mm-hmm. Awesome, awesome. So some youth out there who's listening now who wants to get involved in, in a program or with you or whoever, um, what would be the process for them to do something like that? Give me a call or okay. you know, shoot me an email or whatever. You know, my so they, they don't have to learn so much things for you or whatever to get to a certain level. Because I know when I was playing, I started when I was five. Uh, they told me I got to be able to hold the bat up a certain way and all kind of crap. But you know, I had right, playing right, anyway right. because right. everybody else is playing. So. Right, right. But you know, music music is no respect of persons. So okay. it doesn't matter what age you are or where you are. Everybody ought to go through the same door. So if you fifty or you five, mm-hmm. you you if you're serious about music, you you ought to take on certain fundamentals, and that and, and that's a mouthful because you got to learn your theory. You should you should. If you embark upon an instrument, that's you're going to be your principal instrument. You have to learn technique. You have to learn the fundamentals of that instrument. It's a lot. There's a lot to take, and then you can't be in a rush. You have to enjoy it. You have to listen. A big part of musical growth is listening. So, mm-hmm. you know, people that come to my house and play with me, we're not all in the same level. Mm-hmm. But, but, but that's okay. Right. We can, we can be dead and gone, and hopefully. After we're dead and gone, the seeds that that we would have planted would have t- 
taken root and then you're going to see see it blossom in the next 20 or 30 or 40 or 50 years right you know? right and you see that now in the, in the young talent as you know gift and jelen who mm -hmm. is making us all look good he's <laughs> he's playing he's at the top of the mountain top he's at the peak of his career i mean he's just mm -hmm. getting started but he's playing with winter marsal he's subbing for winter marsal he's playing with roy hargrove man mm -hmm. he's playing with john patisse he just got um four grammys by association with with john patisse man and you know and he's he's um and i met him when he was uh 12 years old and wow. he could mm -hmm. hardly play but he put in the work Right. So again, it, it depends on how 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 serious you are, how bad you want it. You remember yeah. Neil? Neil 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 was Neil was no, great he's back special, then. Man. He's special. Neil is special, yeah. but Neil worked too. Neil worked his butt off. Mm -hmm. you know, Neil practiced. Yeah. Neil, yeah, Neil because practiced he would be beaten on everything in the fridge, the this, the that, round house, and then Stella would say, "Man, Neil, put them sticks down." Yeah. <laughs> Neil drives his car with his drumsticks right there next to. Him. Wow. So when he comes to red light, sometimes mm -hmm. it's, it's, he's just driving and he, he's doing a paradiddle or something on the dashboard. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. he is special. Cool. So now when we when we look at all of that now with, with the children, you talked about your exposure traveling the different parts of the United States and I imagine different parts of the world too. So you had education, you had experience, and you have exposure. And to me, they are the three things that really sets people apart from the others in, in space of competition. Not that you're in competition with anybody, but just to get to the next standard, the next level. For the youth who, who you would be um, mentoring, do they get to get exposure or experience internationally or domestically um, through any uh, associations? Yeah. Well, you know, you could only do what you could do, you know? So mm -hmm. I... You know, as you, so you said, mean you need money to help you. That's what you're trying yeah. to say, right? So if you need you, money, you need to say that because plenty of people watch the show. And you so, definitely, you, know, you mm -hmm. definitely need money mm -hmm. to assist. I mean, you know, we got sponsors to go to New York every year. We mm -hmm. being gift, and I started a band called the Jazz Cats right. with okay. kids. I was the only grandfather in the band. <laughs> Gifton was 12. His brother played drums for me. Who was 10? He was studying mm -hmm. with Neil, and um. Yeah, my my kids were in the band. My son at the time was seven, and um, my piano player was ten, Eric Fox. Mm -hmm. And now they're right. all like really good musicians. Off it, doing their own thing. Gift's son is in New York. His brother Gifton is in New York. Right. Um, Eric is in Montreal, and um, my son Daniel's in Florida. And and they're all playing, and they're playing mm -hmm. on another level. But I I help them, but you have to put in the work. Right. So. Right. So you could have Quincy Jones as a teacher. You can have Herbie Hancock as a teacher. Mm -hmm. You have to go home and put in the work. Mm -hmm. So, and you have to be consistent and persistent with the work. And you have to know how to practice and you have to have a clear um, understanding as to where you're going. Miles Monroe used to always say, if you don't know where you're going, any road will yep. take you. Yeah, and you, you know, there so, too, right? yeah, yeah, exactly. Right. <laughs> so, so you, mm -hmm. and of course, money is the one of the driving factors, mm -hmm. but you have to have the passion. You passion. have to, okay. you mm -hmm. have to have the passion and the discipline to stick with it. Because mm -hmm. like I said, you know, living here is a challenge for musicians because I'm still growing. I'm still that kid mm -hmm. and I need to be inspired. So I would like to go somewhere tonight and just get my mind blown away with some talent and come home and say, wow, I can't believe what I heard. But we don't have those spots here in the Bahamas. Mm -hmm. yeah. so, 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 you know, um, I have to jump on an airplane to go find that. Uh, and, or, yeah. or, you know. So a good, good jazz spot where we have talent um, cycling in and out would be great for people in your bracket and also the youth who are trying to inspire themselves to learn to get to the next level, to be another jazz chism, but of sport, of, of music kind of thing right exactly mm -hmm. yep yep cool. so as we talk about that i would i would think then i mean i've heard him play live um a number of times through you um um gift turn and um get thin sorry because it's, i get it too mixed up but um, i do too <laughs> yeah. and a producer you have one of his clips um so people can understand the level of play that we're talking about here um, you have anyone else queued up 
But um, he he is very I I I consider him to be um, what's the word I'm looking for? Not when you're meek, when you when you're humble. That like he's not over assuming or pushing on people, and you know how some people say you gotta hit a thousand ground balls at somebody to make them feel and and all that kind of stuff. What is that? I hope that on my phone. Yeah, probably is. Madam producer, you, you have the clips? No? Cool. All right, so but, but whilst we, we look for that, um, in terms of development of, like, talk about the, the jazz club, what else do we have to do now? Because there's a lot of development and stuff happening on the um, national level right now. And we need to piggyback on this. Um, where this money is being spent, coming in, all these grants being offered and this and stuff, we need to get some of that into your space. Because they talk about the, 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 the orange economy, but the orange economy is huge because engineering is a part of the orange economy. And if you look at it, they might end up with all the money, or we. But, you know, there's something. Cool. So, can you hear me? I can hear you. Okay, yeah. What What are the major steps that needs to happen to, to give a, a platform for, for these youth and yourselves and the industry to start to grow again? Well, it would be nice if we had a place to play. Um, and um, then, you know. Well, now, uh, whenever oh. you're away, I can't sleep nights and I suffer all the day. I... Just sit and wonder if love isn't one big blunder. But when you hold me tight, tingling all through, I know somehow I was That's doing Neil in the background. Okay. That's Neil Simonet. And yep. I'm doing this ever now. My husband is a great pianist. Who is this singing? Oh, yeah, that's good. Yeah. She sang it the other day, too. Yeah. Look at the sky. It's the color of love. There must have been an angel by my side. Something happened I came down from above. Yeah, so that one is the, the the regular one with you all just jamming. I was looking for one with the, with um Gifton playing the trumpet, but the, oh, so what um in terms of the um what is now considered the national art thing on the old Shady Street Theater? Could that be repurposed for something that you would want? Absolutely. I mean, the 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 cool. I mean, yes, yes, it can be. I mean, it. it, it I haven't been in there recently, but last time I was there, it needs some work. I yeah, mean, yeah, yeah. You know, yeah. but um, the the location is great, the size of it is great. Um, it can be, you know, renovated into something beautiful. I think. Right. Um, you know, um, and I think it should be. You know, yeah. I, uh, I know this what? administration said they're looking for a new art center, a big, bigger, proper thing. So I'm just thinking, okay, when you get a new one, you got to do something with the old one. You can't just let it sit and die and whatever. Yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah, I mean, we, uh, I, I think we're deserving of that too. We have so much talent in this mm -hmm. country. For capita, yeah. we must be one of the most talented nations on the planet, if not the most. Right, okay. Uh, you know, mm -hmm. we have so much talent here. So much. So, so who are some of the talent that people would might recognize or might want to come out to listen in a club like this? Yeah. 
wow, you need a longer show than yeah, an hour, no, no, you know, no, no, <laughs> you know, yeah. but, that but no, yeah. but, 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 but I, I mean, I just, I name a few that Angel Reckley, who you mm -hmm. listen to, um, Simone Bo is a fantastic, yeah. thing. Danielle Dorsett. Have you heard yeah, that? I heard her. I heard her. Mm -hmm. She is amazing. Yeah. She, Akia Knowles. She is also amazing. Akia okay. spent a lot of time in China the last nine years or so. Mm -hmm. um, there's a young girl by the name of Tish Cunningham. Tish mm -hmm. came here as uh, uh, she she was a Dorian victim, mm -hmm. and uh, she moved to Nassau, and she's fantastic. Um, oh man, I can go on. Um, then there are musicians like Christophe Devoe, young mm -hmm. bassist, just finished uh, McGill in Montreal. Um, Cyril Thompson, who um, studied with myself at, at um, UB. Um, uh, Christoph Young. Uh, uh, um, there's another bass player, Christopher Hilton. Watch out mm. for that kid. He's only 16 years of age. He's, a, he's at Queen's College, and he is serious. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he's going to be something. Um, I mean, I mean, I'm Morgan Hannah. Oh my God, Morgan! Morgan is the daughter of Alex Hannah. Morgan is okay. Morgan is 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 amazing. She just um, finished college uh, in Edmonton, I, I want to think, Canada. Um, but she is, yeah, she's good. And all of the people I mentioned have their feet on the ground. Mm -hmm. You know, they're so humble. You can go to them and you can correct them. You can say something and they don't catch feelings. And, you know, and the the, the singers as well. You know, it, they, we, we just have a, a, a huge amount of talent here. So That's this is on. where the seeds are then for Absolutely. us to make this, this, this nice um, growth, the feel of... Of prettiness absolutely of joy and music <clears throat> yeah and so some of the food you talk about gifting um who else is at like way up there in terms of their skills and ability is i mean like i say we had all these people like the george smiths and them who went around the world and people don't know their history and how impactful they were globally and george similar let's say i said smith sorry george similar but um, those who might be out there, so that the young people know that they, when they when they aspire to do this, then there is an opportunity for them. It's not just a hobby, you know. Right. Well, Gifton's <clears throat> Gifton's career is doing so well right now that that sort of sets him apart mm -hmm, because okay. of, because of who he's associated with. So. Uh, if you go to New York and you mention the name Gift and Gel and they open doors for you, they let you in the clubs free. <laughs> I mean, wow. they, 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 this guy is 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 that well known in New York and and in Belgium, in France, in Israel, in London, in Canada. I mean, he's he's known in all these places and he's doing well. He he visits all the time. He plays. He just got back from San Francisco. He played the New York Jazz Festival in June with John Batiste. He's off to London in a couple of weeks. Then he comes back. He plays in Chicago. He just came back from Washington yesterday or two days ago. So, so he's doing things that, and he's playing with musicians that I can't think of any other Bahamians that really actually had a career as, 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 you know, as, as impressive as as that with the caliber of musicians that he's playing with too, um, mm -hmm. but. Uh, Manza Campbell is another young trumpeter who is going to be incredible, I think, uh, because he's, he's just a great guy and he's playing well and he puts in the work. And there's another guy who went to, he used to come to my house and we would play all the time. And then uh, he was going off to school to study journalism. He was going to Canada and he um, stopped in New York for a, a month and stayed with the uncle of his in Brooklyn. And he hung mm -hmm. out with Gifton for a month. And then he changed his major. He never left New York. So he's, wow. he, you know, uh, he's a great trumpeter too. His name is Yanzi. I don't remember his mm. last name. Yanzi. Um, he's Bahamian. Um, you know, but again, these a lot of these kids came from poor families. They don't have the luxury of mommy and daddy sending them off to college. Right. Gifton didn't. Gifton got a full ride. Winton Marsalis called my house looking for Gifton. Mm. Um, you know, Eddie Henderson gave, um, through Eddie Henderson, Gifton got a full ride at, at, um, school in, in Ohio. What was it called again? Um, Oberlin, Oberlin. Oberlin okay. He was at Oberlin conservatory and he was there for a year. 
And then Winton called looking for him to bring him to Juilliard. Wow. So, you know, and, and, and Juilliard only accept like two or three trumpeters a year. What? You know, yeah, it's, you just can't go there. I mean, you audition for Juilliard and then they narrow it down to like five or so. And they, they take in like two or three. Um, so, um, get, um, but you know, um, these kids don't have, if you don't have like a great scholarship, um, a lot of our uh, musicians just, just have to end up, uh, finding their own way. And that's yeah. what that's about it. So we would do well to have a fund then that will be able to, to, um, well, I guess we we were looking at one at one point in time with the with the lottery. Eh? So I mean, if we could, if we don't like lottery to do it, we we need to just develop a different type of fund that can fund the creative right. arts and and sports and everything to get to move off to get these necessary training. Exactly. And then Jackson Burnside statement, even though five years uh, delayed in another two years or so could really be a real thing where everybody's yeah. coming truly for those those yeah. items again. Yeah. Because yeah. they did one time ago, but we we lost it. Now we gotta get it back. Right? Yeah. Cool, cool, cool. Yeah. So the igniters for the sector to get started again. Um I know I speak about it a little bit, but anybody really listening to me, um, in this space, because I'm not in the space like that, I'm, so you know, I'm a supporter more than an igniter or, or a mover and shaker in the spe- in the sector. Um, people that you are, huh? Supporters are important. You play an important role. Yeah, 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 yeah. But I mean, what I was going to ask is who who are those um, who are in the sector now who could stir up enough momentum to cause something to happen? Well, I, I, for the sector. I'm I'm glad you asked because there are a lot of people behind the scenes mm-hmm. who don't you don't know about and they don't get credit for their behind the scenes play. And I'll tell you, I'll expose some of them. Okay. You know a girl by the name of Tina Knowles, Tina yep. Knowles Wong yep. and Tony Wong. Yep. Okay. Mm-hmm. They are they are incredible supporters of the arts. I mean, if 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 Tina had her way everyone will be played. I mean, this, this whole country will just be, you know, popping mm-hmm. to music. Mm-hmm. She loves music. Um, Patricia Oaks Laywood and her husband, Robert Laywood, okay. they are always doing something to help ignite these artistic cause in mm-hmm. the country. Um, the Luther Jazz Festival came out of Michelle. What's Michelle's last name? Oh, Lord, I can't remember Michelle's last name. But Michelle, who lives in in Governor Sarver Luther and Patricia. Mm-hmm. Um, 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 the Charitable Arts Foundation. Okay. The Charitable Arts Foundation um, has been very helpful in making it possible for people like Christophe DeVoe to vote get um, through McGill University. Mm-hmm. They've helped Gifton, they've helped Gifson. Um, they, they helped um, when I took the kids to um, New York a few times, they would give us money to help pay for the uh, expenses. It was, it, 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 was in, it was in cheap. A guy and his wife by the name of Felipe Ituralde, Il, 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 he's been amazing, him mm-hmm. and his wife. Um, um, Maria Jose, Maria Jose. Um, 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 Roy Goodman, a, 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 a retired neurologist friend of mine who lives in Maryland, he he, he knows the Bahamas like we know the Bahamas. He's visited over a dozen times. He's plays the piano too. So he knows all of Gifton and, and, and Angel, and he knows all the guys here and he loves them. And, and he helps out however he, he can. Um, so, um, um, and I'm sure I'm, 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 I'm forgetting people at, at the present, um, but there are so many people that are, you know, that help. We could use more help. We could use, uh, you know, um, um, you know, companies to to sort of understand the bigger picture, so that these youngsters that we talk about can have like a foundational um, right. cushion where they can, you know, study. They come to me. They they 
learn some stuff and then they go off because even though I may be helpful to some of the kids, you need to get off. You need an environment. You need to be thrown in the lines. Yeah. You need to get exposed. Because uh, if you don't, um, what happens, and you know this, Happy, because mm -hmm. you started playing the drums, right? I, mm -hmm. imagine, if, imagine if you had more than just Neil Simonet to look up to. If you had an environment, who knows? What, that, that's kind of what happened to Pepe. Because mm -hmm. you know, Pepe was doing very well. Remember that? Ludwig drum set that Uncle Irvin bought for him. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. you, know, you know, I used to borrow that <laughs> to take on gigs, man. You know, but Pepe just didn't get the same exposure that exposure, Neil and I right. got. Mm -hmm. you, you know, so exposure. Yeah. And he was part. into it too. He was into it. Yeah, mm -hmm. he, pretty much so. Yeah, but you know those those things. Um, you need that support. That support also, like like you mentioned, because yeah. sometimes um um not saying in Pepe's case, but sometimes. Um, I see when with swimming uh, or even in baseball, um, when I was around baseball like like that, uh, a lot of times um, when we used to walk from Soldier Road to the, to the baseball stadium, and so a lot of people may have come from the Grove or, or, or like, so there was a shorter walk, but their parents and stuff wasn't really supporting them, and so a lot of times they had to either go work or something else, and so they weren't able to express their gifts the way they would want to, and if they were able to, to practice or whatever, it had to be late at night after they worked after school and what have you, and it, you know, it just didn't wake up because you have to have so much repetition in order exactly. to really get good at, yeah. at the next level. When I met Gifton, mm -hmm. Gifton worked at Super Value on Wolf Road and Montrose, I think it was, and he, he lived off of Lincoln Boulevard, mm -hmm. and he would get off at seven o'clock at night, eight o'clock, whatever time it was, they closed. He was a packing boy. And he'd have about thirty, maybe forty dollars in his pocket from working all day, and mm -hmm. oftentimes he'd get robbed on the way home. Mm -hmm. So by the time he got home, he had no money, mm -hmm. and he'd go back the next day to try again. And um, now he's touring the world, doing what he loves to do. Yeah, and I'm sorry I didn't upload it before the show, but the the videos that I had with with Gifton um, on yourself playing, and he did some runs on the on on the trumpet um at the new um state not i call it stadium new amphitheater and also at the island house um when y'all did the gig down there you know it would have been good for the people to, to hear him and i guess you could just go on youtube and, and google him and you will you will see some of his works but he is not just he's, he's one of many right who yes have gotten himself to the next level like and I, I always say it's similar to baseball now because baseball now has I would think almost 30 people in professional baseball wow. um, that's off the top of my head thinking um, and the rest are coming for 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 um, for our big man so you know we everybody knows that you don't sit on the top forever but when when we look at all of this though the development of our youth um, how is this music and learning and competing with friendly competition with friends who are in your camp learning to, to perform or play a certain piece? How does that help them in their schoolwork? Well, that's a great question. Um, it helps them in the schoolwork. It helps them in just in life in general. Okay. Music, music has a wide spread reach like that. Because music teaches you how to respect other people. It teaches you how to listen. It teaches you how to, to sort of, it's a democracy. Mm -hmm. So when we're playing, we're playing democratically, especially creative music, especially music where we're thinking and playing on the fly. It's, it's improvised. So I have to respect you. Mm -hmm. So in order to be, to respect you, I have to be selfless. So I have to, I have to listen to you. And there's a difference between hearing and listening. Mm -hmm. You like two feet from me and you playing in an arm that's 200 watts. I have to but hear you. That doesn't mean I'm listening to you. You know what I'm saying? So mm -hmm. jazz, jazz music causes you to, and for you to get that inertia in the music, you have to be immersed in what's happening around you. That's why jazz musicians oftentimes are totally wiped out after they play a, 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 an intense set because it's exhausting. 
if you're invested in the music that deeply. Right. Mm -hmm. um, other genres of music don't really require that 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 same level of intensity because it's because it's it, it's like a puzzle. You practice your part. I practice my part. We practice for a thousand hours during the, the last week. Mm -hmm. uh, regurgitate your part when we count one, two, three, four, and we play the song. Right. That, that's pop, and I'm not knocking. No, pop I know music. what you mean. Yeah. I love mm -hmm. pop music, but I'm just saying those are the facts. You know, it doesn't require spontaneity necessarily, especially mm -hmm. in, even in the fundamental. I'm a fun, I'm one of the fundamental foundational players in the band. I'm the bass player, but I still have freedom in being the bass player when I when right, I play right. jazz. Mm -hmm. You know, so that in and of itself teaches you humility. It teaches you democracy. It teaches you um, 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 patience. It really teaches you how to listen. And, and listening is hard, boy. Listening. It took me years to learn how to listen. Because I thought follow, I was following. You know, following and following. Too. Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. And 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 you know, and I mean, you know, and and then there's a you know, and music, no one's ever seen music. You mm -hmm. know, it's invisible. That's true. That's true. So, so so it's it's got that spiritual element to it that just binds people together. Mm -hmm. you, you know, you know. Um um, 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 Gifton was sitting. Uh, Gifton went to Government High before Lisa McCartney. I should have mentioned Lisa McCartney too, because she's a she's an igniter right, in okay. a big way. That woman is amazing. Mm -hmm. um, but um, Gifton went before Lisa took Gifton onto her Windsor uh, um, school. Okay. Okay. He was he was at GHS, and I would pick up my kids from Bayview Academy, and I would drive to government high and pick up gift and they'd come to my house we'd eat and have some fun and play music till mm -hmm. ungodly hours at the night you know and this one day gifton was sitting down waiting for me to pick him up and these guys walked around about four or five of them and they say hey, look at this guy play, yeah, playing all this jazz stuff but i bet you i take that on from you and lick you side your head from it uh, mm -hmm. with it is that you be, uh, you could play um Osam Osam, you know, and get <laughs> the drum and he played da 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 and they were put he body put he body. So you know, my point is just the music alone. Even though that wouldn't have been something that Gifton would have been there practicing, right? The, the music in that instance calmed yeah. what could have been a hostile situation. You know, mm -hmm. situation. You know, um, music is powerful like that, man. You know, I used to walk, I lived in the Bronx for a while. Mm -hmm. And um, I would have to get off the train um, and walk about a good many blocks to get to my apartment from a gig. And this sometimes happy two, three, four o'clock in the morning. And mm -hmm. I pass in some unsavory characters. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But they see me there rolling that big bass. Mm -hmm. There's almost like a, it's almost like a, it's, it's like he cool you're carrying an elephant you know right right you know he cool you know like you know he ain't you know well i, I don't know they must be quick that well he ain't got no yeah. money right you know but um yes but sell the base that's the first but thing can't sell the base. <laughs> right <laughs> exactly but um you know yeah music has a, such a wide you know reach of 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 good that it imparts to people it teaches you how to evaluate how to um um listen how to um be selfless um and 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 arrange. you know mm -hmm. arrange mm -hmm. make decisions um it just sort of kind of grows you up you know mm -hmm. in, in the 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 best musicians that i've had the privilege of meeting and being around and i've met some really great musicians i used to go to herbie hancock's house every tuesday night back in the okay. 80s when I was in mm -hmm. college. And the best musicians are usually very humble people. They're mm -hmm. very, very, very humble. They they are quick to listen and slow to speak. They just want to, they don't, they don't think so highly of themselves, you know? Right, right. They are really, really just beautiful people. You know, yeah. I mean, you know. That, that's what I was saying about Gifton. That my experience with him, the couple of times that I've been around it, at no point in time, it was like, you have to listen to me and whatever no he was always engaging but 
seeking information from you or listening to hear what you're talking about. And it seemed like he would pick up on that vibe and then it translated in his music when he play. I mean, that, exactly. That's, that's, that's exactly. what I saw. Exactly. You know? Yeah. But you know, you know, time is flying when, when, you, when you're rolling and having fun. So before we get too far down the road, um, in terms of um, what we need to do to cause this thing to go completely kabonkers. And when I say kabonkers, not just develop the talent, but develop the talent until y'all could get paid. Because the amount of hours and what you do for the branding of the Bahamas, y'all really should be getting paid um, for for this mechanism. Well, Politicians to me don't focus on anything until they feel that it's going to affect their vote. So how do we get it more vocal, more, um, not vocal, what's the word, more visible to, to them to have, to, to want to step up and, and assist the igniters and uh, the um, philanthropists who are out there um, assisting you all already in a bigger way? Well, Vaughn, well, thanks for asking that question, man. That's, that's, the, the, you, your appreciation for something um, sort of um, fuses your, your 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 commitment to it. So, so every time I I'm at a gig and I look up and I see you in the audience, for instance, mm -hmm. that, that 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 means so much to me because we go way back. But you take the time to come and listen, and and you really and it's so obvious. It's so yeah, obvious to me it, that, that, yeah. that that you're enjoying it, yeah, right? It puts so, you in a different mood, mm -hmm. right? But unfortunately, you know, there's a lot of people who wouldn't make that effort. Mm -hmm. So, to support the talent here is a big first step. Um, you could support by coming out, um, mm -hmm. and 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 um, again, you know. The creative arts and jazz, especially, um, isn't so yet understood here. So, Miles Money used to always say, "Say um, um, your level of of how, how do you say I can't remember. It was it was something to the extent of your level of investing in something has to do with your level of appreciation of it. Mm -hmm. So, if you don't really appreciate the music on a deep level, then it's hard. You ain't gonna really write a check to, yeah. <laughs> to make a difference yeah, in, for this cause because yeah. you don't, don't really understand the depths the, of it, you know. Um, and so it's a sell. So we have to sell it, right. you know. So, okay. mm -hmm. so, so, you know, you know, and you know, and this all goes back to the Bible. The Bible says, um, "Let your light shine before men, so they may see that your works are good." And then the glory goes to, hey, to the, the Father in heaven, but let your light shine. Mm -hmm. So it's incumbent upon you in your area of work, my area of work, just to let your light shine, just mm -hmm. to be good at what you do. Whatsoever your hands find to do, do it with your might. Have mm -hmm. pride in what you do. I don't teach these kids about money. I teach them about excellence because your gift will make a way for you mm -hmm. if you invest in the gift. Someone once told this young lady I was mentoring, I won't say who it was, yeah. but it's a political mm -hmm. icon, say, if you want, if you want to get put on the map, you got to be true to your culture. Mm -hmm. You got to be true to who you is, your culture. Mm -hmm. so, I went, so I told the young lady, I said, in all res due respect, and the guy who said it was a good buddy of mine, I said, tell him that you never pursue the map. Right. You pursue excellence and the map will pursue you. Mm -hmm. You don't pursue money. You don't pursue the map or the, you pursue you 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 pursue you be good at what you do right right and um that will sort of draw people in I, I, that's why i talk about gifting so much mm -hmm. because the map is pursuing gifting you went to marcellus called my house asking for gift and jelly mm -hmm. that's the map right well, now how did that happen i could tell you how that happened because gifting lives with me right so that happened because the, the the brother practices like there's no tomorrow. He's passionate about what he's what he's about, you know. Right. Mm -hmm. that, that that that's I mean, you know, all it the success that I've had in my career so far has 
been because, you know, I burned the candle on both ends, you know, and mm -hmm. the, the promise is, is that that will make a way for me. Um, um, the great Larry Willis said, if you take care of the music, the music will take care of you. Mm -hmm. Now, of course, yeah, we need to get some administrative things in place. But um, when, when kids and adults alike come here to play music, we talk about music. We focus on the works of the greats, and I have right. tons of okay. records, and we watch in YouTube videos, and we talk about music, and we jam in, and just time. Time is of no importance, you know. You know. You know. Yeah. We don't remember time, and um, I wish my bank account reflected more, <laughs> you know, of that. But I'm still believing that that will happen. Oh you know? yeah, yeah. I mean, listen, <laughs> everything is coming as time, you know. Um, I mean, you, you mentioned that and um, talking about pursuing what you know is right in your heart versus doing something else. And they talk about the young lady with the culture and they say to the culture, culture, culture. Well, I know my son, Dominique, will get mad with me. That's the, the artist, the painter and what have you. But they used to tell him the same thing. Oh, you got to come home more often and you got to get involved in this and get involved in that and stuff like that. And, you know, he just stuck to what he was doing, little piece, and getting frustrated, 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 frustrated. Now his circuit is between California, Florida, France, wow. Vienna, whatever, a couple of places like that, New York and Chicago is where he has, seems like a constant flow of, of shows. You know, yeah, I mean, granted, the the money and catch up like like that man who got them things up when he got one pin go up it almost a million yeah. dollars. But I mean, but you know, the at least he's, he's, he has a cash flow happening. Yeah, and so that's just like you say on that stage in the states and wherever else you you have an audience and a package, and so yeah. somehow we leverage foreign people here for tourism and stuff like that, but we don't seem to be leveraging it for everything. And so that's my goal is to try to find ways to antagonize these politicians and um, public officials to cause these things to materialize. But I know what baseball did for me. And so I am a firm believer that we are predominantly kinetic learners mm. um, coming from, particularly from the diaspora uh, and, um, and so forth. And so if we focus a lot more on that, I think we will have more more confident youth. And then when we have more confident youth, we will have less people being stressed out and doing all of the crap that a certain small se segment of people are doing that is disrupting the flow of everything. But, you know, those things are, are great, and I'm glad that you continue to do what you do because that's a big, 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 big hit on putting positive back in the direct, right direction and not allowing everything to just go straight. Because we have some people around here who just, they they wake up in the morning and see how much negative they could cause. And so we don't we don't follow that. Right, but, right. Um, but I talked a lot, asked you a lot of questions, but what is what would you like to say? And I should have asked the audience to ask their questions, but I, I was so into talking, I keep forgetting that. But um. What would you like to say to the to the general public out there in the audience who's, who's listening and watching? Well, first of all, thank you for listening. Thank you for watching. Mm -hmm. um, um, and thank you, Happy. Thank you. Uh, thank, mm -hmm. thank you guys for doing such an amazing job. I mean, you give me all these kudos, but right back at you, bro. You mm -hmm. know, you're doing so much to, to, to better the community and by extension, the world. And, you know, we need that, man. We need that. Um, yeah, come out and listen to some good music, even if it don't necessarily, you know, your cup of tea. Uh, you know, I, I, I didn't grow up with jazz, you know. I grew up, mm -hmm. you know, did you funk. see Uncle Lou when he falling around? Funk, yeah, mm -hmm. I play, mm -hmm. I'm a funkster, you know. But um, music is that sort of, is that why the music is all related. Mm -hmm. That's the thing. And, then, and, and that's another thing. I mean, you know, I, I don't put music in compartments. You know, I know we have a, um, a a strong need to have a cultural identity of art and music, and I understand that. But um, you know, um, music is all good. So if 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 you can come out and and support some good jazz, um, it's all Bahamian. It's all Bahamian. I, I I often tell people, I said, hey, you ever saw a a, a um, uh, you ever saw a Bahamian cloud? Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. and they and they kind of and they say no, no. Well, 
that's how I'm every good and perfect gift is from above. So music right. is a good and perfect gift. And so, you know, when you give it a visa and a passport, you limit its 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 broadness. Mm-hmm. And um, so, you know, if my if your son or daughter, or my son and daughter wants to play the violin and they're Bahamian, they must listen to violin. They must listen to that that music. Mm-hmm. So um so so while it's important to support our music and our cultural sound, it's also important to have a healthy outlook on the art of music, especially right. when you live in a small community where you don't have a big scene. I, we don't have a Blue Note here or a Village right. Vanguard. Right. You know? Not yet. Not yet. Not, not yet. That was my number one goal coming out of college when I came inside to come back home. I wanted a jazz club. Right. I wanted to play the, the saxophone. God knows why, because I couldn't blow nothing. But anyway, <laughs> I just like the, the the soulness of the saxophone. The guy always had a hat on, and he just looked so cool. I can tell you, can get all all the girls. But anyway, yeah, <laughs> it's all about the bass, man. It's all about yeah. the bass. Yeah, yeah. But I like the bass, but I, I just couldn't do the numbers thing. That some wasn't working out there. <laughs> You could play that baseball, though. I remember that. Yeah, man. I guess everybody got their skills and their their gifts that, yep. that he put us on this earth to, to shine and some. Yep. Yeah, cool. But I know I'll be I'll be remiss if I did not say this. My sister will, will kill me in a couple of minutes when I see her. That if I didn't say that my mom was gonna be a concert pianist, but she decided oh. to have me and, and her and my oh. brother Dylan and get married instead of doing wow. all of that. But you know. Wow. So th- there might have been some hope, but I don't know because yeah, yeah. I had a teacher who told me when I went to learn to play the piano, she said my fingers were too small for the keyboard. When you get big enough, come back. Right. <laughs> that was it. Did I Uncle went to play Fee baseball. Play, uh, and that was it. I never went back. Yeah. <laughs> did Uncle Fee play or? Yeah, he played not music, but he played some other things. Come yeah. Tennis, <laughs> so. <laughs> I played tennis with Uncle Fee, man. Yeah, yeah. Remember those days? He was okay. Yeah. 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 Who would? Yeah, man. But love it, man. Love it. One love you. Continue to do well. Um, Thank you, my brother. Keep the motion. Whenever you get something, who knows, I'll bring my little camera and, and shine some motion up on there. And, and know, I get see these Karen, people I up see. in the forefront and hopefully push some, 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 some pressure into the, the, uh, the movers and shakers so that we could get some, some support. In, I see. I see. Karen's economy as a whole. Yeah. yeah. I see. Doctor Sands, Karen Sands, uh, uh, post something on. Yeah, and she's giving a shout out to all yeah. of the young Bahamians following their passion. Follow your passion, and thank you. Yes, that is key. And she's an I, yeah, I, for your and inspiration. Yeah. Mm-hmm. She's been a big inspiration to me, and her mom, Ori Sands. Mm-hmm. I, there's so many people, you know, I, I, Ori Sands. Let me just quickly, Ori Go Sands ahead. to mm-hmm. this day. She has subscriptions to Jazz's magazines. Mm-hmm. I, uh, she reads them, and she will send them to me when she's done reading them. She'll make um, um, CDs. She'll make copies. She, she'll she'll order a nice um, um, Nancy Wilson uh, CD or so, and she'll say, "Oh, Adrian, you got to check it out." She's never right. given me anything bad, by the way. And, mm-hmm. and um, um, another guy who we lost, um, Mr. Lashley. Mm-hmm. Lashley, oh, yeah, 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 Charles Lashley. Yeah. Charles Lashley. Boy, yeah. that guy was a jazz lover. Yeah, we, we, we used to have all kind of good times. Actually, I did a, uh, an arrangement um, of different songs and stuff, and I sent it to uh, to Tony when, when he had passed. And, man, uh, yeah. you know, uh, that, that lit her right up, right? When, yeah. When she saw that. And even yeah. other people in the family were telling me about it. Yeah, yeah. And so, but you know, talking about Ori J. Sands, um, that's 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 my jack. Because you know, me and Derek was dead close. Um, we were in university together and everything. And my first jazz concert, I call it a jazz concert. Uh, Phyllis Hyman. Oh. Was performing at the, I think it was the Miami Center or whatever they call it, and she came over. They went to it and they took me with them. There and I thought wow. that was the most amazing singer I have ever heard wow. live. It was amazing. That yeah. that woman could sing. Right? Yeah, yeah. Sorry yeah. that she had to have yeah. the challenges I, that she had, but I know. Yeah. So I could just imagine how I felt in that stadium that day, in that um, arena that day. How you yeah. all feel when you're all on stage and and other people 
And so we just need to get more of our youth to f- experience those things. Yep. And I think we'll yeah. go from strength to strength to strength to strength. Yeah. Amen, brother. Yeah. Amen. Cool. Gladys Hannah, Hannah Martin, too. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I like that woman. She she well, she's from a musical family, but she's been very helpful. Mm-hmm. Cool. You UNESCO, I think she um, Ministry of Education has helped um, support the jazz event that just happened a few months back. Mm-hmm. And, um, yeah, she, and, and, and and she loves Gifton. Yeah, man. I'm I, I really sorry. We well, I I had it. I put it in the, in the group chat, but somehow we. It won't download back to the computer to, to load, but um, that we had there. But guys, I can't encourage you more. So, and then do you have young people like like Shelter and the other guys who was performing that night when Shelter was performing? Those guys, they can be brilliant if they stick with it. Shelter yeah. just left my house just minutes before I came on your show. So, what? so Shelter, yeah, Shelter is 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 like a young Neil Simonet. I tell his dad, John. And John is a big inspiration to me. John, Stan Burnside, mm. and uh, Antonio Roberts. I, 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 I John Cox for people who don't. John know. Cox, yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, um, um, Antonio Roberts. I, I get a lot of inspiration from these artists as well. Uh, they, um, but get back to Shelter. Mm-hmm. Shelter, Shelter is very musical, and he's. I think he's what sixteen. He's sixteen years old. About, yeah, he's know, you know, and he's very musical. He plays the piano, he plays the bass, he plays the guitar now, and he's and he's always creating something. He he writes music, he produces. He's very smart, and um, you need to yeah, say that again. Yeah. So his his Grammy up in the sky could could hear that because oh, the, that's right. the teachers the teachers did not think he had anything going for himself. You know, really? it's just a sad thing that we have in this country that we have instead of they try to inspire people there's people who try to just for a little life. for a little over an hour before i came on your show shelter mm-hmm. had a lesson with me and we played through this song and i and i pulled the song out on him he had never played it before so i taught him the melody so i didn't mm-hmm. expect him to get the melody so fast in like one hour mm-hmm. not only not only did he get the melody but he was already embellishing the melody like right away he was adding things to it which is wow. which is something that usually takes a while you usually mm-hmm. have to go into that you know i was like mm-hmm. boy i can have to call tony harding for your butt you know because you know <laughs> he's just he's just um yeah you know yeah. Said, see, if, if kids like that if we had an environment is i'm one person but if you had an environment where they can go and see other kids mm-hmm. play on another level you know i uh, because when you see kids at 17 and 18 playing well beyond their years, it's because of what they did at 9, 10, and 11, and 12, leading up to that. Mm-hmm. And, um, you know, New York City provides that kind of environment. Okay. You know, Maryland, L.A., Chicago, places, big cities where you can find, like, a scene, right. you know. And, and um, yeah, it's just it's not so much here. But yeah. we'll, we'll get there. But that's a good model, and so I will keep that in my mind because you know I'm always pressing people, and if I could get enough people to pay attention, and you know we got to bring you back to the table and have you give input, and people in your your space where you feel credible, and other people, you know, input as to how we can make this creative economy blossom. Because I mean, to me, that's the one which should really be number one, if not number two. In our, in our environment. Yep. Because yep. we have, all our people are creative. I've never yep. seen a set of people who are not as, as creative as us, whether it's in cooking, it's in sports, it's in the arts, um, whatever it is, we're creative. We even talking, look at Das Quay, um, I mean, gracious. The things that he's saying, for, I'm sorry about those from mm-hmm. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, I, I, I love Sawyer yeah. Boy. And yeah. then the people down there that have done this and whatever. Yeah. yeah. Cool. Yep. Well, thank you, sir. Yep. You know, you take me back and make me think about when we used to call up the 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 um the bakery and then we used to ask them if their bread is fresh and then when you say <laughs> when they say yes and then we used to say well do spank it and hang up the phone and then when caller ID came on, came on then they start calling us back and it was like oh yeah stop that because I'm, not <laughs> I'm doing things like that no more. Yeah. Those days are gone. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. You people do some crazy things when you do things like that. Yeah. Thank you kindly, Madam Producer, everybody out there on social media. Um, you know, please, please, please support, 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 support those in, in, in the creative uh, arena, particularly Adrian and his crew. A lot of them. Adrian has been very modest today when talking about people, but there are... I consider to be at least a thousand of them that has gone through his fingertips. That he has helped to move on and get to higher heights. And if we could just systematize, systemize that so that that could be a full academy of the Adrian J. The J. Adrian D. <laughs> academy of Arts. How'd that sound? That sounds great. great. <laughs> Thank you, my brother. Thank you, my brother. Yeah. Thank you for having me, man. Already. Nice I didn't do so. I, yeah. Cool. I get you out on the baseball field one of these days. Yeah, no, I ain't going back out there, but I, I, I'll be wherever you can be, where it's good sound and there ain't no threat <laughs> to me. Yeah, I'll be, I'll be there. Enjoyed the show? Then subscribe to us for more educational and inspirational content. Ring the bell so you never miss a show. Let's